Hey guys, um, this is going to be an update on Mr. Jaden, and um, I'm sorry it's taking me so long to do one of these type of videos about him, but I just never seem to have the time to sit down and make this video. But I'm finally making it, I got a few minutes, but anyway, so I've had a lot of people ask me about Jaden's health concerns or health issues. And um, I don't know how many of you guys are new subscribers since, you know, announcing my pregnancy and I've been doing pregnancy vlogs. But um, all my old subscribers know, but I'm going to fill you guys in really quickly. Jaden has a midline defect in his brain. And um, so it has to do kind of with his pituitary gland. His pituitary, he's missing his pituitary stalk that connects the pituitary to his hypothalamus. So um, he has some issues with his pituitary gland send sending out the right signals that control certain hormones. And one of the biggest, um, so he's got two things that it affects. It affects um, his growth hormone. He is growth hormone deficient. His body does not produce growth hormone. And um, it affects his thyroid levels. So he also, so he is on a growth hormone shot because his body can't produce the growth hormone on its own. And he's on a thyroid pill because his body can't regulate his thyroid as well. There's a couple other things that it could affect. This kind of defect could affect um, there are a couple other hormones. One of them is cortisol, the stress hormone. But he had his checked and his uh, cortisol stress hormone levels were fine so he not doesn't have to do anything for that and later on um, as he gets older they will have to monitor and kind of check his sex hormones so he might need hormone therapy there as well but that's something that they can't tell until he gets a um, obviously gets a bit older so right now his um, two main hormone issues are his growth hormone which he gets um, a shot every night of growth hormone and um, his thyroid pill. Another thing that it affects that goes hand in hand with this kind of like um, defect is his eyes. In his right eye, his right eye has a very small optic nerve. It's not, it's an underdeveloped optic nerve. And there's nothing they can do for that. It's just always going to be underdeveloped. And because of it, he's basic, he um, doesn't have very much vision at all in his right eye. He, he's basically blind in his right eye. So um, if you've seen him in videos, um, if you didn't know, that's why his eyes, it looks like he has a lazy eye or that one of his eye turns inward, that's why. Because it doesn't have any, um, it really doesn't have any vision. So that's why he wears the glasses. The glasses really aren't corrective glasses. They don't do much for his actual vision. But he will always be glasses dependent his whole life simply for the fact that he needs the glasses covering his eyes to protect his good eye. Um, to make sure that it doesn't get any weaker um, and to make sure and to protect it from sharp objects. Because if something were to happen to his good eye then he would be, you know, basically blind. So it's extremely important that we do everything in our power to protect his good eye because he's only got the one eye that, you know, functions correctly. So um, um, we tried the patching in the beginning to see if we could strengthen his weak eye, but um, they said it was kind of like a far-fetched thing anyways to begin with because it doesn't really help kids with um, that small ocular nerve you can't really you know you can't fix that so the vision always going to be very very poor in that eye so we gave up the patching we were doing eye drops at one point to dilate his good eye to make his other eye work harder but he didn't do well with that it didn't work so we've um, stopped all um, we've stopped all things that um, could have helped the other eye because it's just a lost cause basically so but um but yeah he's doing really really well he is due for another eye exam to have his eyes reevaluated re-evalu um i need to schedule that and we need to go do that and also when he gets a little bit older they will be doing eye muscle corrective eye muscle surgery on his eyes to help with the alignment to help with his eye that turns inward 
Um, and it's just simply going to be for cosmetic reasons, so that he doesn't get made fun of in school and that type of thing. But they want to wait um, a little bit longer until he gets, you know, kindergarten age or so, when kids start noticing those kind of things. And um, because they don't want to do it too soon, because if you do it too soon, then you have to, you know, repeat the surgery. So they're kind of holding off there, but they will be doing corrective eye surgery on him. I'm just... I don't know when exactly, but that will do nothing for the vision. It's just simply going to correct his alignment. Oh, what else? Oh, he had an endocrinologist appointment recently, which is why I finally decided to sit down and make this video. And um, they drew some. They took his stats. They drew some blood to recheck his levels and. Um, Um, as far as, I forget what the exact weight and height were, which I feel awful, but I'd have to go back and look at his records to try to figure it out. Um, but I do have his growth curves. Um, before treatment, his height, he was below the 5th percentile. So basically not even on the chart for height before treatment. And he was about 2, 2 and a half when he started treatment. Um, he was below the 5th percentile. Now at 3.5, um, he is at the 25th percentile. So that's a huge jump. He's actually on the curve, so he can, you know, even though he's still on the smaller, the shorter side, he can still be considered a normal sized 3 year old, which is really awesome. So if you look at his chart, this is his growth chart. And the X's on here are his um, his plotted growth every time we've gone to the endocrinologist so far. So you can see he was really, really below when we first started. And look at how much he's jumped. Look at the linear growth there. He's there now. So um, if the pattern continues, you know, he could still, you know, continue to close that gap and get higher in the percentile. So that's really exciting. Um... I think he is around, I would say, 39 inches, or not 39, 38-ish inches. I'm not 100% sure on that, but somewhere around 38 inches is what he is, and he's three and a half. And then as far as weight goes, um, when we started treatment, he was at the 10th percentile for um, weight and now he is at the 25th percentile as well so he's had a, a jump in his weight as well um, and here's his growth curve for his what weight did, and he weighs about I want to say what I did. wow um, he weighs about I just put him on our home scale and it said 36 but I know that that might not be correct um, accurate and I think, I'm thinking when he went to his appointment, he was around 31-ish, thir early 30 pounds, or early 30 pounds, you know what I mean, like 30-ish pounds, 31, 32, or he could possibly be 36, I'm not sure. But around there is where he is in his weight, and here is his growth curve for that. So you can see that has also been trending upward, which is awesome. Which his weight's never been a huge concern, it's mostly been his height. So it's really awesome to see the big jump in his height growth. So they're expecting that to continue to rise. And, you know, hopefully by the end of get, treatment, get for me. he will be the size that he should get have been if he didn't me, have this defect. So when we went to, uh, to his appointment, they did, once they did Daddy. do the blood draw. Did I take a baby over there? Yeah, you need to be quiet. When we did, they upped his thyroid medicine, he is now taking 44 milligrams of, of um, his thyroid tablet every day. We give that to him in the morning. Um, it comes in like a little pill, and we have to break the pill in half, and then he takes the pill, and he chews it up, and then we give him something to drink. We never have any issues whatsoever giving him the pill. He takes it very willingly. It's really easy. He doesn't fight. He just takes it, crunches it, and then drinks something. And then now he's on 0.6 milligrams of his growth hormone shot. So both of those doses went up a little bit since his last visit. 
And um, I just want to clear a couple things up. A lot of people think that the only reason he's getting growth hormone is because he's, he's small. He's on the small side. But there's a lot more to it with him than just growing in size. His body is growth hormone deficient, which means his body does not produce the growth hormone that it needs for, um, for healthy development and growth. Not just growth, but development. It affects his organs, it affects his teeth. There's a lot of different things that it affects. It's not just about making him taller and bigger, which a lot of people um, have that misconception. He's growth hormone deficient, so he needs this growth hormone. You know, your body needs that as a child, and so the only way he can get it is through these growth hormone shots. That's why he has to have them. That's why we do not have an option. Um, not giving him the shots is not an option because his body doesn't produce it on its own. We have to give him those shots, and it what keeps him healthy and um, it what what keeps him growing and developing correctly. Um, before he started treatment, he had a he had receding hairline. He kind of had like a pot belly and chubby face and a really big forehead, a really high pitched voice. And since starting the treatment, um, which I all don't those, want to go. Here, touch, play with my phone. Which are all symptoms of a growth hormone deficiency. Since starting the treatment, it is amazing how different he looks, how much his body has changed. He's he's taller, he's thinner, um, he's lost a lot of that chunky baby look that he had in his face, and he's just he's looking a lot better, a lot healthier since starting the shot. So. That's really awesome. We give him to him at night when he's sleeping. Um, he does kind of wake up and try to kind of fight it, but for the most part, it's not a big deal. You know, we it's just something that has to be done. And another change, which I forgot to mention, is before he was ha he was using the uh, growth hormone pen, where we just had to dial up the uh, dosage. I have a video of it of us giving him the shot with that. You just dial up the dosage and give him that. But his insurance stopped covering that, so yes. now we are using vials and syringes. So we actually have to take the medicine, mix it with a powder, and then use insulin uh, needles uh, to draw it. up Whoa. the medicine and then give it to him that way. Ow. I need to make a new video showing us giving him the shot since he's changed the way you know that we give it to him since it's not the pen anymore. But I think that's covered... That's cov I think I covered everything. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will try to answer them. I'm going to post a couple links down below about growth hormone deficiency. That way, because it's it's really complicated. It's not something that I just get on here and quickly explain to you guys. Um, it's really complicated and um, more complex than what you think it is. So, I'm going to post some links down below about his growth hormone deficiency and about his optic nerve hypoplasia that's what um, his eye condition is called with the small optic nerve and other than that he's just doing really good and another funny thing I get I get a lot of people asking me if he's potty trained yet which I think is so funny because um, he's been potty trained for a while he's he's three and a half and he's been potty trained since he since a couple months after his second birthday. So he's been potty trained for a long time. So I'm not sure why people are still asking me um, if he's still potty trained. Because I thought I made a video t saying he was potty trained. But anyways, yes, he is indeed potty trained and has been for quite some time now. Um, even at night, he doesn't sleep in anything at night. Um, he doesn't sleep in a diaper or pull up anything. He's potty trained at night as well. He starts... Um, he starts preschool in October, so that's really exciting. And he's just, he's really doing well. He's thriving. He talks so clearly and uses full sentences, and you can understand everything he says, and he's just getting so big, and he's so fun, and he's so sweet. And he's just, he's a real joy. He really, truly is. He's always been so easy and laid back and just easygoing. Um... Yep, he's been fun. So, he's also do doing gymnastics, which that's a whole nother video. We had a horrible experience with him at gymnastics class with him not wanting to listen and wanting to run around like a wild animal. 
So we had to drop him. He wasn't like an independent three-year-old class. We had to drop him down to a mommy and me class because he just did not want to listen and um, was running all over the gym, which was not good. But anyways, we start the mommy and me class on Monday nights, so hopefully that goes a little better than the independent class, and I'll let you guys know. But I think that's it. If you have any questions, leave them below, and I'll talk to you guys later.